today we will look at the top six weird places which animals live. They start out pretty weird, but believe me, it gets weirder. You're gonna wanna stick around for number one. At number six, meet Saculina caracini, a parasitic barnacle that takes over a crab's entire existence. The females invade and live in a crab's fufu. They sprout root-like tendrils that reach throughout their victim's body, even coiling around its eye stalks like some parasitic mind-controlling zombie. They live off of nutrients dissolved in the crab's blood. This parasite grows into a bulge on the host's underside where it would usually house any offspring. Infected female crabs nurture this knob as if it were the fertilized eggs they normally keep there. But wait, it gets weirder. These gender-bending barnacles cause parasitized male crab to grow abdomens as wide as the girth of a female's, wide enough to accommodate the barnacle's knob. And the male grooms the parasite just as an infected female crab would their own family. They essentially start changing the behavior and physical appearance of the crab to become more like a female. Hydrothermal vents are one of the worst places on earth that I could think of to live. A hydrothermal vent is located at the bottom of the ocean where the magma from the earth's mantle meets seawater and ejects it out at incredibly high temperatures. The temperature of the water is anywhere from 60 degrees Celsius to 465 degrees. Most hydrothermal vents form at around 2,000 meters below sea level, where pressures reach 250 times that of the atmosphere. With over 3,600 psi of pressure, which converts roughly to 262 kilos per square centimeter. This means roughly the weight of 60 cats could be pressing down on every square centimeter of your body. The average human head is around 633 square centimeters or 37,900 cats pressing down on your head. Not only this, but they have no light, no energy from the sun, and the vents are spewing out tons of dangerous superheated chemicals. Despite all of this, around 600 different species have been found to live in these extreme environments. Tube worms, mollusks, snails and slugs, crabs, shrimp, and even fish have been discovered living in these crazy places. Number four goes to the parasitic worm, Loa Loa. This worm is so worm-like it was named twice, with Loa Loa literally translating into worm worm. They live in the rainforests and swamps of West Africa and infect people through the bite of a deer fly or a mango fly. The worms then wander around under the skin of their victims and can survive there for 10 to 15 years, feeding on fluids in human tissues. They then lay their eggs in your blood and the little baby worm worms then travel around causing havoc. These babies tend to reside within spinal fluid, urine, and something called sputum, which by the way I think is my new favorite word. The worms live in the bloodstream when the sun is out, meaning people are more likely to get bitten by flies and the parasite can spread more. They then retreat into the lungs at night. They even occasionally cross into the eyes where they can be quite painful. Of the 10 countries with the highest infection rate, up to 40% of people have reported being infected with the worm at some point. Now we're getting to the big boys, the super weird ones. Number three gets a special shout out as this is potentially the most extreme one of the whole list. However, we don't know if these guys could actually live there, but tardigrades could in theory live in outer space. These little cuties are able to live in punishing heat and freezing cold temperatures. They can survive ultraviolet radiation and cosmic rays, and they can even survive in outer space, a vacuum with no oxygen. You might also find tardigrades in your garden, on a nearby tree, or even on a patch of moss on your building. They can literally survive almost anywhere. It is most likely that when all other life on our planet is long dead, the dawn of the tardigrade age will be upon us as they will out-survive pretty much 
anything. They do this by essentially going into cryosleep or stasis, which is known as cryptobiosis, which may also be my new favorite word. When conditions are bad, they eject 95% of the water from their body. They slow down their metabolism to basically nothing and a barrier of glass-like tough protein forms around their cells protecting them. Now that I'm 30, this is pretty much the perfect description of what a hangover feels like. Tardigrades have survived exposure to space. In 2007, dehydrated tardigrades were taken on the Photon M3 mission and exposed to vacuum, or to both vacuum and solar UV for 10 days. Nearly 70% of the subject were reanimated by rehydration, creating weird little Franken bears. And in 2019, a capsule containing tardigrades in a cryptobiotic state were on board an Israeli lunar lander which crashed onto the moon. So there may genuinely now be tardigrades living on the moon. The crustacean Simothoa exigua is the only parasite known to replace an organ. It enters through the gills of the fish attaching to the base of the fish's tongue. Using its front claws, it severs the blood vessels in the fish's tongue, causing the tongue to necrose from lack of blood. This causes the tongue to eventually wither away, at which point the crustacean attaches itself to the tongue stub, acting as the fish's tongue from then on. They feed on the blood of the fish or sometimes the fish mucus. Despite this disgusting and rather disturbing life cycle, the parasite causes almost no other damage or harm to the fish, just casually chilling in place of the tongue. So here we are, number one. If you got to this point in the video, you're genuinely a legend. Thank you so much. This last animal lives a pretty crappy existence. That's actually a great pun, but you'll see why in a second. The pearlfish has evolved to live inside a sea cucumber. Now this alone isn't weird enough for number one. It lives inside a sea cucumber's anus. Anus, 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 anus. It lives inside the anus of a creepy sea penis. Pretty grim. The most pearlfish ever found in a sea cucumber's special little Airbnb is 15. 15 little friends renting out the most unique of hidey holes. So how does the pearlfish do this? Step one find a host. The pearlfish uses their sense of smell to locate a sea cucumber. Step two, they follow the water current as it moves in and out of the sea cucumber's anus. Step three, enter aforementioned anus. The pearlfish can enter head first or tail first. So how do they get in? They wait for the sea cucumber to breathe in water through its anus. Then they swim in. A lot of the time, that's it. The pearlfish just casually lives inside the anus, causing no fuss and no problems for the sea cucumber. However, some species are known to be parasitic towards sea cucumbers, eating their gonads and other internal organs. Now, I can't speak for everyone, but most people don't like unwanted anal invasions. But the sea cucumber has a few tricks up its anus. One defense is its cuvirian tubules, special sticky threads that the sea cucumbers eject from their bum in self-defense. The aim is to tangle up predators and let the cucumber escape. The pearlfish often just shrugs this off. So I'll leave you with one last thought. Anal teeth. Google this at your own discretion. Some species of sea cucumbers have developed anal teeth as a defense to try and stop the pearlfish from entering. Let me know in the comments any you think I missed that would be in your top six. 